You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. This is Scott Shapiro from Space Vacation, and you're listening to John on the Bod's Mayhem Hour. Heavy metal to you. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bond's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a huge privilege to welcome vocalist and guitarist Scott Shapiro of Space Vacation. And they are releasing their long-awaited fifth studio album entitled White Hot Reflection. On April 29th, via Pure Steel Records, Space Vacation has released their first single, Rain in Hell, from this album. And I'm telling you what right now, get out and listen to this uh, because you will not be disappointed. So, Scott, my man, how you doing? And uh, Hey, pretty good, man. Pretty how- excited to be here. Really excited that this thing's going to be coming out this week. I tell you, it's like we started getting ready to record this thing. You know, we got back from a European tour in 2019. And we're like, all right. No more shows. Let's finish writing the album. And we booked time. Our, our studio time was uh, March 20th, originally, 2020. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the week before, I think everyone knows what happened. Everything just stopped. And that was that. And then it's just been a slow crawl to get this thing out the door so people can actually hear it. So we're, we're hyped. The wait's finally over. White Hot Reflection is the accumulation of two and a half years of pain loss, reinvention, and good old-fashioned heavy metal is this space vacations f you to everything that's happened in the past two and a half years possibly does that even if that makes sense <laughs> you know i don't think that's that's really the case uh, you know most of this music was written prior to all of that happening for us it's more just like man it is about time we get this thing out there for people to hear it you know we put a lot of time and effort into this and into the production of this record and we're very precise about the decisions that we made about the songs probably more definitely more so than anything we've done previously uh you know partly because we had so much extra time like typically we book time in the studio we, you know, we'll book seven eight days in a row we'll go in there cut the thing in a week and maybe come back for a, for a couple of overdubs but that that's about it uh this you know, we had to, you know, come in and do the drums over a couple of days and then come back in two months and you know, come back and do the rhythm guitars. And it just gave us a lot of time to think about how we wanted things to sound. And, and if we needed to change anything structurally, as we were going through the recording process, we were able to, to do that, you know, not huge things, but just, yeah. you know, simple things, you know, well, let's add percussion. We've never done that before. Um, and what type of instrumentation do we on, want to use on, on the different tracks and mm. just a lot of additional thought that we otherwise you know, probably would have just said, you know, screw it, it's heavy metal. Let's just do this. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that, that's really it as far as, you know, what this band is. And this was the, you know, the last album was, was a bit of a challenge. We had a huge turnover. Uh, we, we have a totally different rhythm section from when we did black divide. And basically that record was just me and Keo working on it. Uh, and we were able to, to get a couple of friends, uh, Stephen Warren, to come in in the studio and, and flush that record out so we could record it. Um, but this album is a full culmination of everybody in the band. And we all still have the same members, which is a miracle considering we hadn't been able to really do much in two years. So that's the kind of FU I'm talking about here. You know, that we were able to, to put this together ourselves. We're a real DIY band. Like, you know, so all the writing, all, every, every part of the production, uh, you know, we've got our hands in, you know, obviously you know, Zach Warren, phenomenal producer, phenomenal engineer, you know, made this thing sound the way that, that we wanted it to. Uh, but the ideas behind it and, and what we were trying to get across are all a hundred percent, all four of us. How difficult was it for you guys to sit here on this and be like, we got to get this out. I'm tired of listening to this. Dude, you know how sick we are of these songs already? I mean, Rain and Hell, we wrote, you know, the end of 2018, we started to play it in shows in the beginning, in around mid-2019. Uh, 
so I mean, that song's been with us for a long time. And, you know, it's funny because we've been practicing these songs for so long that we've been, you know, starting to play shows again. And we're all so sick of the new songs that we've been playing some old stuff that we haven't played from the Cosmic Band Guide era in like five, six years. So, you know, yeah, we're excited to have it out there. I think the toughest part for us is once we finally finish the recording process and we're done with it and everything was mixed, mastered and ready to go, um, you know, we turned it into the label and then we, we sent it out to the, the uh, vinyl manufacturers. And they took another full year to get it done. We had this record turned in in April of 2021. Jeez. And so, you know, thanks Taylor Swift for printing a bunch of vinyl that no one's going to buy. <laughs> you know, it just pushed us out of the queue. You know, originally when we turned it in, they're like, yeah, 12 weeks. I was like, that's great. And then it was, oh, you know, it might be 16, 20 weeks. And I was like, oh, that's a long time, but we can deal with that. And then it turned into 52 plus. Jeez. So I turned it in in April and we're going to get it like literally Thursday. What has adding these other pieces to this band meant to it, man? Has it, has it fueled that fire? Has it, has it like, you know, gave you that extra oomph that, that, that you guys needed? Yeah. You know, we've had a bunch of incarnations of this band. People that have followed us know that we've had some, uh, you know, some turnover and, and some different lineups over the years. And we had our original lineup was we were a three piece and then Keo joined the band right before we recorded Heart Attack, which was our first record with Pure Steel. Uh, and that really changed the dynamic. But then we had a, you know, my brother who was the bass player had to move to Southern California and the drummer ended up having some other things to do. Andy Hedrick, phenomenal drummer. I, I really loved playing with him, but that band was all, all energy, you know, hundred percent energy, hundred percent of the time, you know, execution, yeah, you know, could have, you know, there are times it could have been better, but you know, it was, it was a really fun version of the band. The next version of the band uh, we had Cubby Bauman on drums and my other brother, Mark, came in to play bass. And in the, in the interim, before that, even, we had like, we worked as a three piece with Eli, who's our drummer now. Uh, and we had one show even with the current lineup that we have today, one with, with Kai on bass and Eli on drums. And I remember after that show, I was like, oh man, it would be so nice if we could keep this going. But Eli was in Hatchet at the time and Hatchet was getting some really significant touring offers. So he just didn't have the time anymore. So then, uh, fortunately, my brother, my other brother, Mark, moved out and took over the bass for a while. Uh, and then Cubby Bowman was our drummer and that version of the band was probably a little more heavier. So the cosmic Vanguard record reflects that it's a little bit heavier, but it's also a lot more raw and, and unrefined, uh, compared to what we're able to do later. Um, but you know, it all depends on the personalities of the people of the band. It's like, you got to play to the strengths of, of the performers that you have. And, you know, Cubby was a hard hitting driving drummer. And so we kind of got behind that mark is always more of a bit, you know, he's, he's, he's more metal, you know, he's very like, he likes the heavier style of heavy metal. And so there was a lot more of you know, heavier driving music incorporated in that record. And that's you know, ultimately what it sounded like. But this record, it's really the first time since our very first record where the full band lineup was able to contribute to the writing process. So, you know, Kai added his two cents. Eli was a significant contributor on the songwriting side. He orchestrated the majority of the complex vocal harmonies that you hear on the record, uh, which was just really added to the textures that we wanted to create with this album and really focus on, you know, vocal driven record. Um, so as a drummer, you don't really expect the drummer to come up with these musical passages and, and work on the song structure or uh, um arrangements, but Eli had a huge hand in that for this record and was, a, you know, I think the results are significantly better because of his additions. Oh, he even directed the video for this for right. Oh, yeah. 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 He's, he's a, he's a, uh, a filmmaker in his spare time. And so, yeah, the video came out fantastic. We're yeah. really excited with that as well. Just, you know, another thing that we have to DIY, right. We just have to do these things ourselves and, and push it and hope for the best. The guitar. It was so good. Yeah. The guitars, mass cream color guitars. And, and the, the, the in you know the video of the church at the beginning and everything's like this is badass i really did i told you man, we're gonna get into this on how much i like this later trust me because i'm like i told you i'm very impressed with this but what led rain in hell to be the debut single off this album because i know there's some other bangers on here that just as well could have been the, the the lead track off of it yeah yeah i mean we had some discussions about that for sure but rain in hell we felt like was the most you know, anthematic song on the record. Um, we've been performing it for a long time. It really 
has all the pieces that makes our band our band. Strong vocal hooks, sick guitar riffs, you know, that, that guitar lick at the beginning where it's like a pulsating guitar lick. You know, that's just something that was, it took us a long time to put that together because Keo's like, I've got this crazy lick and we're trying to figure out what do we do with this thing? Cause it's not like we have to kind of go with the pulse, not with what you're playing. And so it took us a while to get it rhythmically. And then I had this, the, the rhythm piece from the verse that I'd been working on for a bit. And I'm like, well, let's try to stick these two pieces together and see what happens. Um, and so that song was the first real culmination of all four of us writing together. And, and so I think that's ultimately one of the reasons we picked it. That and it's just, you know, it's a great little anthem, like, you know, rain in hell, rain in hell. Like who doesn't like singing that in heavy metal band? So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Paying like, homage, like, you know, hey, we're not soft rock here, you know, it's like paying homage to like Ozzy and Slayer and Judas Priest and uh, creator, all uh, these old bands, man, just, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's what we're going for, right? Like we want to play the kind of music that we want to hear. And, you know, there's a lot of really good newer metal bands out there right now. Skullfist and Force. I mean, Force is not that new. Cauldron is another great band that we like um, that, that are doing this kind of thing. But no one's really doing it the way that, the way that we are, where it's much more vocal centric and, and melody centric. Um, and so, you know, that's what I've always been into. You know, I think you, you know, hit the nail on the head. You know, Ozzy, Ozzy's uh, stuff was definitely a big influence on me vocally. Um, and so that's the type of thing that, that, you know, we're trying to put out there and the type of music that I want to hear. Would you say this is the band's strongest work today? And if so, what makes it the strongest? Scott, what sticks out the most for you to say, yeah, this is our best work yet? Yeah, I definitely think this is our best work to date. I think the complexity of the songwriting was just, a, you know, a pretty big step above for anything we'd done previously. The amount of work we were able to do with the vocal harmonies on that record. I just, I don't know how we would have even thought about doing some of that stuff previously. I mean, we've always done a lot with vocal harmonies, but not to this extent. Uh, and I think the overall production and the quality of the performances is just better. Are these all brand new songs or these songs left off previous albums or just been, you know, hidden away for a while and then said, Oh, let's finally get these out. Yeah, no, no. These are all new bangers. Like we didn't think we were going to have a band anymore when, when Keo and I recorded uh, Lost in the Black Divide. So everything that is on this new record has been written for this record. I mean, in fact, there's probably too many songs that we put on this. And we had a debate about that internally. I was like, hey, should we do turn these into two records or put out two EPs? Like, how do you want to do this? But at the end of the day, it was this, you know, these are the songs that we wrote in this period of time. Like, let's not break it up. Let's put this in the time capsule, put it all out there as a double LP and see what happens. And we'll start writing new stuff after that comes out. And who knows what direction we'll feel like going in then. I want to back up here and ask you this, because I, I totally missed it and I apologize. But how much stuff do you guys have written that's stored in the tank right now? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've actually just recently started working on a couple of new, uh, a couple of new riffs. Uh, but we've really just been so hyper focused on on getting this record out there and being able to perform it. Because I gotta tell you, man, like performing the songs on this record is not easy. Hmm. Um, you know, the amount of coordination that it has to go into the vocals on this is, you know, in some ways probably more than we, you know, bit off a little bit more than we could chew to a certain extent. But you know, we also don't want to ever use backing tracks or anything like that live. So you know, we either do it or, or we can't do it, and you know, typically we can do it. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing else is, is, uh, really, uh, in, in motion yet. Um, but we have started talking about some new stuff. Any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on this album? I mean, I know these are your babies, man. I know that you're sick of them, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, man, there's a lot of songs I really like. I know Keo would, would always point to playing with fire. He loves that one. I think it's got the strongest chorus on the record. Um, and it's, we wrote that one really to showcase what Eli can do on drums. Mm. Uh, you know, we wanted to write something that was a bit more of a hard rock song than the typical heavy metal song and, and something almost in the vein of the who, where you just, you know, where Keith Moon would just be basically drum soloing through the whole song. And, you know, we wrote that song with that intent in mind really like, Hey, let's see what this guy behind us can do and show him off a bit because he's got some talent. Um, uh, I also really like, uh, uh, burn with me. Um, 
that one's a real, a real fun one to listen to. The chorus is huge. Uh, Kai's got a little bit of a bass solo in there, so he gets to show off a bit. Uh, tons of guitar harmonies in that track. Uh, I really enjoy that one. Um, probably my favorite to play live is um, um, When Heroes Die. Um, just because that's kind of a nice mid-tempo song with some some cool, almost thin Lizzy, scorpion sounding guitar harmonies. And, you know, I, I'm really impassionate about what I'm saying in that song, which is kind of an ode to the folks that came before us. And, you know, hey, if this music is going to continue, other people have to pick up the torch and, and play this type of music to carry it on into the future in whatever form that's going to be. I'm glad you mentioned that because I really think what caught me was just, just the overall sound of this album. Plus, it's it's so guitar driven. It, it takes you back to the old 70s and 80s style, like, ah, oh, guitar solos. Listen to the guitars, man, finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and, mean, you know, you know, we're big guitar guys for sure uh, in tone, um, you know. Having a good sounding record, half of it is just having good guitar tone if you're you know, in a heavy band. Um, and that was something that we really focused on. We wanted to make sure that we didn't sound like a lot of other music that's getting put out right now where the guitars are so upfront and in your face that it's almost obtrusive to the rest of the music. I mean, it works for a lot of bands, don't get me wrong. But for us, we, we like more of a blend. We want you to be able to hear everything that's going on and not necessarily have the thickest guitar tone imaginable, but have the right guitar tone for us, which is much more of like a 70s, early 80s, you know, Gibson guitars through Marshall Amps sound. Was there a track that you were working on that totally ended up sounding different than it was intended to when it was first brought to the table? Was there one that just kept like maybe changing or you just kept adding and then finally just that's it right there? Oh, yeah, there was a couple. Uh, you know, Burn With Me was definitely one that started out weird. Uh, Eli had given us this demo of songs that he had kind of worked on through the years, you know, more like riffs and pieces of songs. And this one part from that we ended up using in Burn With Me, two parts, actually, the, 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 uh, the lick for the chorus in the intro and the, the noodly bits on the guitars during the solo piece. Um, and we really liked that. And we're trying to figure out how to work on the song. But when we first got it, it was basically like, you know, two Casio, the Casio keyboard track. It wasn't even real instrumentation. So we we're trying to like think about how that would actually be organized as a heavy metal song and, and how we'd be able to still hold on to what it sounds like. And we were, we reworked that chorus probably 10 times before we got it to a place where we thought it really was doing the song justice. So that one was probably one of the tougher ones to write. It's probably why I like it uh, because it went through so many iterations and out of time is another one. That, that took on uh, a, a lot of changes. We had some some instrumentation changes uh, during the chorus for that, that that kind of changed how the vocals are orchestrated. We added a ton of backup vocals to that song at the beginning and all through the choruses. Um, and that song, you know, it's a really long song. It's a seven minute song on the record. Uh, but it was something that when we were working on, I really wanted to have something that was a bit different, right? Like, we got all these bangers, all these like three, four, five minute rocker songs, heavy metal tracks that you would expect to see. But we wanted to have something that was a bit different, that kind of took you in a different direction and pulled feelings out of the listener that, you know, are a little bit more diverse, uh, depending on the section. So hope, agony, fear, like all of that combined into one, one track. Um, so that one was a lot of fun uh, for me personally. When writing your lyrics, when do you say, let's not go this, this way, or can you, or do you just let the lyrics write themselves? <laughs> I wish they'd write themselves. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I try to write about things that are real to me, more or less. Um, you know, through the history of the band, I've never tried to be one that's like really like hung on to heavy metal tropes. And in fact, I generally try to subvert a lot of those. Um, but I don't like to write about things that I don't particularly know about or have any experience with. So, you know, I write a lot about family and friends or experiences that I've had personally uh, and try to transfer that to a format that would make sense to, you know, other people. Um, you know, like for instance, uh, on the heart attack record, the song heart attack is about my dad having a heart attack. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. So, so, I mean, that's, that's the type of thing that I'll take on. Right. But also I'm not afraid to, you know, the, like rain and hell is a good one where it's just kind of like, it's about making decisions and how you want to live your life. Right. And it takes the, the story of Lucifer's origin as kind of, you know, be a master of your own destiny. Hmm. 
And I'm a big fan of that. You know, I have a, I have a weird life. You know, I, I don't have the, the typical, my life is not typical, right? I, I don't think. And it's because I've made decisions and choices to do what I want to do, whether or not the world or other people think it's a good idea. So for you, do you feel like, and I, and I don't mean to the style of left field, but when you mention that, do you feel like music has been an outlet for you? Has it been like your escape? Does it make you feel like you belong and you're finally here? If that makes sense. I feel like myself when I'm playing music. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm a lawyer, my day job. And people ask me, you know, are you a lawyer? Like, no, I'm a musician. It works as a lawyer <laughs> is usually my response to that. You know, I, lo- I love my day job. Don't get me wrong. There are things about it that are really interesting and um, challenging and it doesn't get boring, but I'm creative by nature. I'm a performer by nature. And if I'm not doing those things, then I don't feel complete. Do you feel there's a track on the album for every heavy metal fan out there? Or just anybody in general who likes music? Yeah. You think there's one out there? I mean, to me, I believe so. Well, I think it's a really diverse record. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've got a pretty wide divergence of tunes on that track. And you've got Iceberg, which is about, you know, being solitary. Uh, and within yourself for the introvert. And it's got this crazy like thrash metal, heavy metal ending on it, which is something that we don't typically do either, which was a lot of fun. I love playing that part live, by the way. That's probably my favorite thing to play on the record is that song. Um, that and uh, uh, Heroes Die. But uh, yeah, I mean, th- there's some diversity of tracks. We've got a lot of inspiration that, that made it through to this record. And you can hear it. Like, for instance, we've got uh, uh, Middle Ages, which is, you know, obviously hugely influenced by queen um That's where it. we took a, a ton of of vocal overdubs uh there's like a swing beat to the to the music itself uh it's in a major key we never write stuff in major keys um and you know that song is probably not for everyone right a lot of metal heads are gonna look at that song and say what the hell is this <laughs> but you know like let me said man put what you get out there fly to the flagpole and see who salutes and that's kind of what we do. We're not going to put ourselves in a box and say, we're definitely not going to play this kind of music. Right. Uh, you know, is it a little different? Sure. Um, is this something we're always going to play live? Probably not. But I love that song because it's so different. Uh, and I think the execution on it and the recording of it was just phenomenal. I'm really happy with, with how that track turned out. Yeah, but when you were younger, and plus when I was younger, you wanted an album that was a roller coaster. You didn't want an album that was a thousand miles an hour. Yeah. And time you grab one, be like, you're, you're going to get bored. But yeah. Th- this is a roller coaster of flavor of music on it, man. I think you guys knocked it out of the ballpark. Yeah, thanks a lot. I mean, we, that's definitely something we were aiming for, right? Like, I love records that have, you know, various tones and dynamics to it that you otherwise don't hear. Because oh, you're right. Like, a lot, of, a lot of records, you put it on, and it's kind of the same from beginning to end. It's definitely something to be said for that, right? It's like, you get that good punch in the face. Yeah. That's awesome. But we just wanted to do something a bit different and, and, and put a lot more out there, uh, which is, again, is one of the reasons why I really, really like how this record turned out. There's a lot of different aspects uh, of music associated with what we did. The album was produced by Zach Oren, which you mentioned earlier. How was work with him? Does he get something out of you guys that maybe somebody else might not even get? Yeah, I, I think so. We've worked with him for the last three records and his process works really well with us. He's super calm. You know, he lets us know when the performance is not good enough, unfortunately, a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a fantastic ear and you can kind of hear where we're going with things. And if something isn't working, he helps us to make that adjustment. Um, and from just from a tone and sound perspective, you know, he really knows exactly what we're trying to do and, and gives it what we want. You know, we've done some other records with some other folks before and, you know, it wasn't the tones weren't quite what we wanted. Right. And, and Zach just knows how to do it. And you know, like, let's face it too. He's put some monster records out recently. Like he just, he just, uh, uh, did the new machine head record that came out. So, I mean, he's got a lot of experience and he's very, very good at what he does. And he's really easy for us to work with. And I've known him for a while. So it's a good, good working relationship. And, you know, I'd like to continue working with him for the next record too. What's your thoughts on touring and getting back out on the road with all this COVID crap? But I mean, it's just starting to ease up some, but what's your thoughts on yeah. getting back out? Yeah, we're working on it right now. We, we actually signed an agreement with a, with a booking agent and manager to try to get us some better opportunities because, you know, I hate 
booking shows. We've always been pretty DIY with all of this stuff. And, you know, it's hit or miss. Yeah. You know, we spend a lot of time booking shows and then the shows aren't what we were hoping they would be because we're just not familiar with that area or the venue. Um, and it, it ends up being a bummer, right? Like you go out and play these shows, you put everything you have into it. Uh, you deal with all of the administrative burden of being in a band just so that you can get up there on stage. And then when you do, and it's like a half empty venue or worse, yeah. it's, it's just not very satisfying. So we're really excited to get back out there and get back out there on a bit of a higher level. Or you, you're, <laughs> or you get booked for a nursing home. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we've, we've been offered a couple of tours. Uh, they weren't quite the right fit for us. Uh, you know, I like to do stuff in bursts. I don't need to be on the road for three months. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I got a family and let's face it. The, the music is not paying for the, what we need to do. Right. So we've got to do it in spurts, you know, a couple of weeks here, a couple of weeks there. Um, and preferably in Europe where they just treat the touring bands better. I know you had a lot of music growing up and I know you still have a lot of music to this day, my man, but do you still have a go-to album or just maybe a song that you find yourself gravitating back to? You just cannot kick it out. You, you've got to go back and listen to it at some point. Hallowed Be Thy Name by Iron Maiden. Oh, there you go. I love that track. I love pretty much everything Maiden did, does, uh, but, but that track in particular, that and 22 Acacia Avenue. I, I always go back to those two songs and like, actually I've been kind of bathing myself in Judas priest lately. Uh, I'm really digging on the early priest stuff. Um, you know, particularly defenders of the faith, which is funny because that, that, that album never really popped to me when I was younger, but now I'm just, I can't stop listening to it. Uh, but I listen to mostly records that are like 20, 30 years old at this point. They've got like a warm, crisp sound to them when you listen to them compared to today. Yeah. So, so good. So good. These are my favorite tracks off this album. Uh, the first one, of course, is Rain and Hell, the intro with the choir and the organ. And then it kicks in, man. It's just, it's, it's, it's perfect for, for this band. And uh, Playing with Fire, love that one. Uh, Transcending, I like it because it's fast traditional guitar playing. Then the slow part kicks in, man. And it's just like you, you're just like on a downfall. And it's like, whoa, where'd this come from? So that's really good. Uh, walk away is great. I like, and you talked about middle ages. That's got that Queens esque vibe to it. And that's what really stuck out with me. I was like, wait a second. They just went from fucking heavy shit to queen. I was like, Oh my God, that's, that's amazing. And uh, don't say it. And I'm not going to give everything away on this. Cause I want people to go pick this up because it's well worth it. But uh, man, th th there's a lot of tracks on this album that I guarantee somebody will at least like three or four off of this because it's really good. And you guys, like I said, previously, you guys did a hell of a job on it. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah. Um, don't say it was an interesting one. Um, there's some aspects of that, that I, that I really dig. Like we definitely borrowed some, some, uh, uh, some influences from Megadeth on that one, uh, for sure. Um, that one's, that one's fairly fun to play. Um, uh, yeah. There is. There's, there's, there's a little bit of everything for everyone on this record, I think. Folks, you want to get out and pick up Space Vacation's fifth studio album that's going to be released this Friday entitled White Hot Reflection. And uh, that's on Via Pure Steel Records. And you definitely want to get out and pick this up, pick these uh, singles up and everything from this band. Scott, my friend, how can folks stay in touch with you all? Buy this new album, get ready to drop tour dates and merchandise, anything related for Space Vacation. How can they do that? Oh, right on. Yeah, we you can go to our website. Uh, we're, uh, we are the sole distributors of vinyl for this album. We were this is one thing we actually were able to keep when we signed our record deal is, is we distribute the vinyl. So we actually keep all the proceeds. So there'll be a link up on our website, spacevacationrocks.com fairly soon to order that. But I want to make sure that they make it through customs before I start taking any orders. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for my show? Sure, absolutely. This is Scott Shapiro from Space Vacation, and you're listening to John on the Bod's Mayhem Hour. Heavy metal to you. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link, and subscribe to the YouTube link because we've got a lot of great stuff that's coming up for you guys and gals out there. I guarantee you'll love it. Check out Space Vacation. Pick up their new album entitled White Hot Reflection. Uh, April 29th via Pure Steel Records. I'm telling you, folks, 
I'm just telling you right now, go go pick this up because you will not be disappointed. Scott, my man, you're welcome on here anytime you want, and you have total support from me and, and the podcast. Hey, John, thanks a lot. This has been a lot of fun. Really nice talking with you.
You're listening to Bods Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.